Hey everybody, what's going on? What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What's shaking on your Friday? Hope everything's going good for you. Hope everything's groovy. We got great stories coming up. We got the great Nate during network. We got a lot of things going on. I got to get this tweet finished up here real quick. Oh man. Oh gosh. I was in a hurry getting ready for the show today. I was gone during the day and had to hustle it up to get here. Let me see. Reverse mortgage cash now. No, I already did that one. Uh, let's get Glasgow in there. Let's get Goodwill find asteroid safety and Tarantino. Tarantino, whoops, Tino, top 10, there we go, now we're all done, let's tweet that off, make sure our tweet is perfect, we can't have an imperfect tweet now, can we, that simply wouldn't do, there we go, everything's cool, alright, what do we got going on in our chat room, Midnight Shepherd is here, Says, hail Tom. Steffi Lindley says, hey, hey, from Nashville. Some call it Cashville. She's not chopped liver. There's Rosie Williams. She's got a weasel detector that's unlike any other. It's amazing. Uh, people saying hi. Steffi wanted to say, Dolores wanted me to inform you guys she will be late getting in. Well, we will anxiously await her arrival. We got a hashtag, Midnight is Great. There you go, Midnight. That's the attitude we're looking for from you. That's what we're looking for. That's what we'd like to see right there. Right there. Hey, you know, uh, we've got a great show today. We've got a story of an amazing find at Goodwill. We've got uh, an update on your asteroid safety for the next 100 years. And we've got Quentin Tarantino's top 10 movies of all time. And I got another story, too, about Madonna putting her head on some girl's body in a picture or something. Well, Well, we'll see if we get to that. That will happen when Great Nate makes his arrival in about an hour and a half. And uh, we'd like to remind you that tomorrow... For all of our UK friends, we will have a very, very special edition of the Tom Gully Show. And uh, that'll be for all those folks on lockdown. That'll start at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and 4 p.m. over in the United Kingdom and Ireland. <clears throat> I get get quite a bit of... Quite a bit of flack when I forget Ireland. Thomas Hamilton from Glasgow, Scotland is here. He's a great lad. He's one of our mates. That's right. And he's seen Gregory's Girl. The most Scottish movie of all time. I think it's more Scottish than Braveheart. Mm Mm-hmm. Gregory's Girl. I'd play the trailer, but... There's a lot of title cards in it. And uh, the accent's difficult to understand. <laughs> Gregory's girl. That's right, Gregory's girl. She's wearing a brass here. <laughs> She's wearing a brass here. Anyway, I uh, <laughs> hope everybody's got a great, great, great weekend plan. And. Uh, all sorts of fun for you. I, I, I just I just went and played basketball. Steffi says, hey, hey, to Glasgow, Scotland, all the way from Nashville. Nashville. I, I played basketball again. I got to quit doing that. I got to just start telling them, okay, look, if you guys want to run, if you want to go full, full floor, I'll play. Otherwise, I'm going to go down here and and just shoot jump shots for quite a while. Practice my free throws. 
and pray they don't ask me why, which they will. Because I've got to get some kind of workout, and you guys aren't it. You're, you're not it. You're just you're not it. You just kind of run around, and you don't really understand. Nobody sets any picks. Nobody sets any screens. There's no pick and roll. There's no give and go. It's brutal. It's brutal to play with you guys. It's absolutely brutal from Indiana. I can't I can't abide this. I can't go along with it. Sorry. Very very sorry. But before I went and played basketball, I had a wonderful day and and some wonderful conversation and talking and it was great. It was fabulous. Mm-hmm. Yes, sirree, Bob. Yes, sirree, Bob. So, uh, like I said, the great Nate will be in here at uh, about an hour and 25 minutes. And we'll have him in as we cover our moderately interesting stories of the day. Slightly, just slightly interesting. Um, not exactly the McLaughlin group here. Uh, McLaughlin, whatever. I better turn off the crime show. I think Dennis Farina is dead, but boy, they don't mind showing him on this show. Is Dennis Farina still alive? I believe he's passed away. I, if he hasn't, I apologize. I'm pretty sure he is uh, no longer with us. At least they're not showing Robert Stack. That would be way out of line. Way, way out of line. Come on, open up here. Open up here. Do my bidding. Oh, come on. Stupid thing. There. Wow, that's that's temperamental. That's just not wanting to cooperate with a fella. I'll tell you in a minute. Why isn't that doing what it's supposed to do? Normally, it's, normally everything's Jake. Normally everything's just Jake. Well, I'll try it a different way. And that ain't working either. Oh, well. I may have taxed my browser a little too much before the show. I don't know what's going on there. I got no idea. But I'll tell you in a minute whether the sucker's alive or not. Oh, here we go. Looks like we're getting a little little action going now. All right, here we are. Dennis Farina, American actor. Nope, he's dead. Jeez, he's been dead since 2013. For the love of Mike. And they're sh still showing him on Unsolved Mysteries. Man, oh man. Here's a mystery. Why are you still showing him? Why wouldn't you just get, you know, why don't you just get somebody? He's, he's not in it. I mean, he's just this bunch of, well, it would it'd take a long time to do the voiceovers and all the stand-ups and stuff. So, uh, Steffi says, I still love Unsolved Mysteries. I still do, too. Midnight Shepherd says, Hail Thomas May. Uh, somebody there wondering why I'm, how I get to be so smart. Why am I so smart? I don't know. I just read a lot. I don't, you know, waste my time following or supporting things that are totally non-productive and don't really contain much intelligence themselves. Oh, we all have guilty pleasures. You know, I'll watch the Three Stooges, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, I like to learn and know things. I would say that would be the reason. That would be the methodology one would go through 
And I've, I've never called myself smart. I think that's something other people have to call you. So thank you. But um, I'm certainly smart enough to know that Dennis Farina has not been with us for a long time, but he's on Unsolved Mysteries every episode. Uh, was Robert Stack on that and Jack Palance? They're not alive. Why don't you just show those episodes too? But these ones have updates in them. So, uh, but I didn't realize he'd been gone that long. That's, uh, let's see, 21, 30 days, eight years ago. So, you know, all the, all the scenarios are still true and everything. And if you had to get somebody, cause he's in like a, like a big, uh, NCIS research center, there's computers everywhere. And he's like on a scaffold, a catwalk. And he's like, uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico is a wonderful tourist town. But nobody wanted these visitors. Always oh, some real, you know. And uh, and then he narrates it. So you'd have to get somebody to do the uh, stand-up portion and the voiceovers. Stephanie Lilly says uh, she watches uh, documentaries and not chick flicks. Documentaries are great. Tell us about my days at a certain magazine and how altruistic it is. It wasn't very altruistic at all. And and actually, I I worked for... Um, uh, that's a very large publication group. So I worked on a rock and roll magazine. I worked on a computer games magazine. I worked on, I worked on all sorts of stuff. When I was very, very young. Yesterday, when I was young, I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a long time ago. It's a very long time ago. <sighs> the taste of life was sweet. As rain upon my tongue, I teased at life as if it were a foolish game. The way the evening breeze may tease a candle flame. The thousand dreams I dream, the splendid things I planned. <laughs> Some bad singing for you. I always built to last on weak and shifting sand. I lived by night and shunned the naked light of day. And only now I see... Anyway. Thank you for asking. Uh, Morty Vigor says, Damn, I thought you were saying Lou Ferrigno dies. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he didn't die. Is he ever gonna? I don't think he'll ever will. He's, he's too much vitality. Lou Ferrigno. He's still around. I know that for sure. I know Lou Ferrigno ain't a, ain't a, you know, passed away. <laughs> Midnight Shepherd. This has been the show tunes part of the Tom Gully Show. Not a show tune, I don't think. I think that's just a Roy Clark song that I would love to play right now, but that's not allowed. Yesterday when I was young, it's got like an intro, a really long intro where he's like talking and stuff and then he then he gets into the song but uh you know this is nice call me an incel next why would i do that i have no no you, know, you ask a question i gave you an answer if you don't like the answers to questions then don't ask the questions Steffi says, push the little daisies and make them come up. Yes. Lou's still around. But I don't think most publishing companies are that altruistic, that are for profit. I don't think that's part of the deal. 
Um, Midnight Shepherd says, any call to you would be wasted, Starboy. Well, you know, I don't understand people sometimes. He yeah, ask a question. Obviously, if you're asking the question, you don't know the answer or you're being obtuse. And so then when you get the answer, you know, you ask a question, you don't know what you're going to get, and then you get it. You just got to kind of... Morty Vicker says, what happens when you do something you're not supposed to do on YouTube, Tom? I think there's a variety of things that can happen to you. I wouldn't know. I'd have to consult the terms of service, which a lot of people don't do. Or they do it, but then they go, nah, that doesn't, that doesn't pertain to me. <laughs> They're not talking about me. I'm special. I'm the smartest boy in the whole wide world. Uh, I know what can happen. And apparently has. I know some people when, when that happens, they, they blame like nine different people. Yeah. In their own words, it's, it's all over the place. First it's this person, then it's their followers, then it's that person, then it's this person. Everybody but the one person that's really responsible. The one person. You can tell me why you were speeding, sir. Well, but the rain and and it was and in the car in front of me was and, but what about mm, eh. that was a dramatization there <laughs> that was just a quick uh, dramatization I gotta check a message here real quick I get lots of interesting messages these days boy did I have some interesting chat today Like in person chat. You know what? He was yesterday. I, I can't attend to this now. For crying out loud. I got the other thing taken care of during the day, which I it's a thing that shouldn't have even had been taken care of. We covered that. We covered that in bloody gory detail. Uh, that's the first call of the day. Let's see if See if it works out for us. It's not looking like it's gonna. It's really not. Nope. Just got big zeros. Ah. <sighs> uh, oh, okay. This again? All right. Can you imagine the drooling pig ignorant dullard that thinks this is like invasive or bothersome it's just you know basically all it says to my audience is hey look <laughs> here's another person with no life that's all it says to me whatever whatever uh, don't forget to like and share. Spread the word of Tom. Thank you. <laughs> yep, there the lines are open, obviously. But, uh, yeah, you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The kid ain't got no mother, you know? <laughs> hey, hey, I called this guy's show. And, and I made beeps. Uh, high five. <laughs> Uh, there's some people uh, that don't realize that the things they do to try and... I don't know what they're trying to do. This is, that's the sad part. Make them look dumber than the person they're trying to annoy. They don't, Oh, by the way, this weekend, special edition, Tom Gully Show. 
UK lockdown, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. over there in the UK and Ireland. So if you're up and about in the U.S. or if you just finished tea time in the U.K. and Ireland, give us a listen. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love it. Yes. We would love it. I'd love it. I'd love it. Oh, oh, it hurts. Oh, it's so invasive to my show. No, stop, please. You've outwitted me once again with your incredibly intellectual beeps. Let's see if we can get some more. Let's see if we can get some more. Yes. Oh, no. Not more beeps. Anything. So one page got taken down. Then two. Then three. Then four. And I'm pretty sure a fifth one did, too. Thank you for for helping us count along. Follow the bouncing ball. <laughs> oh, no. They're calling in with the beeps. Guys, help. <laughs> no, no, no. no let's, let's just walk through it. Somebody, they have all the opportunities in life, all the myriad of pastimes, hobbies, other shows to watch, whatever, all the way down there. And they've decided their poison arrow is calling in with some beeps. Oh, that's, uh, that's a tribute to them. <laughs> That is a testament, a shining monument. Dolores is here. She says, I'm late. No, you're not, Dolores. You're right on time. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it one bit. Oh, so the one page got taken down. And then the other page. And then, then into the other one. Yeah, that's three. And then another one. That's four. And I'm pretty sure there might have been a fifth. I don't know. But but that thank you. Thank you for, for helping. Because we, we're not as sharp as you are. We sometimes forget. We sometimes forget, you know. Oh, no. Not the beeps. Oh, no. Somebody even tried to verbally give them yesterday. They're so, you know invested in the beeps all right we'll say goodbye to that one then we'll get rid of that there we go and then we'll do that right there i'll get to you don't worry i'm taking care of some stuff here uh one more i gotta take care of one more thing okay there we go oh you guys with your with your just invasive beeps Oh, man, oh, man. How can I ever combat that? It's just, it's just too much. Oh, stop. Stop with your torturous, torturous beeps. Oh, please, with your torturous, tor oh, it's too much. Now go tell yourselves you've, you've just completely destroyed the show. Go ahead. Go tell yourself that. Come on. Give yourself a high five. Have mom make you another hot pocket. Go on ahead. Go on ahead. You've earned it. <laughs> You've really earned it. What did you do for a Klondike bar today?
A lot of shows don't have the stones to uh, even have a phone line. What would they do? No, yeah, go there. There, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Get, never mind. Never mind. Let's see here, folks. Just saying hi to Dolores. Dolores, hope you're feeling well today. And uh, for Dolores and Dolores only, today we have stories about an amazing find at Goodwill. We have an update on your asteroid safety for the next 100 years, just in case you've got asteroid phobia or whatever. And then uh, Quentin Tarantino's top 10 movies of all time. And the great Nate will be here for that. He'll be here in, in full regalia for that. I don't know. Those, those, those very hurtful and uh, really invasive beeps might scare him away. They really might. Like a four-year-old telling you he's going to make you disappear when he gets his magic set or something. <sighs> Can you imagine? Yeah, let's call with some beeps. That'll get him. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's just too funny. It really is comically sad. Okay, hold on. Everybody, brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. We could have more beeping here. It's like a cross to a vampire. It's just too much. It's just too much. Well, this call doesn't look like it's going to answer, so we'll just dispense with it. And I will answer this beep call. Oh no! Stop! You're so mean! You're so terribly mean! Uh, oh, more? You got more beeps for me? Yeah, okay. That's fine. That's just That's just beautiful. Oh, man. It's like somebody saying they're going to soil themselves if you don't do what, you, what they want, you know? I mean, it's... <laughs> okay. Do what you want, man. Do what you want. <laughs> Uh, let's see what's in our chat. Let's see. Dolores says, maybe the beeps will bring healing. Bring it. Steffi Lindley says, beeps equals aliens. Dolores Colbert says, no crosses here, please. Yes. Midnight Shepherd says, hey, hey, Dolores. Uh, Thomas Hamilton says, Scotland versus Israel. I'm assuming... Is that is that a um, international break soccer match or is that the rugby? Um, oh, it's, uh, it's a rugby. Forty-five nineteen. Rosie said, "I ate a chicken nugget today, Tom. Am I doomed to damnation?" Well, you uh, you you had the ability. You didn't choke to death on it. So, but you probably had a state certified attendant nearby. I'll bet you. I'll bet you you had someone there that could perform the Heimlich in a pinch if you needed it. But there's nothing wrong with chicken nuggets. I I don't get the McDonald's. Those are fused. I don't like the ones that are fused together. They're better at like, I would assume Chick-fil-A or KFC, but 
or what's that place with all the the sauces? Raisin cane. I hate that place. It's like, dude, I'm coming here for chicken nuggets and, and you're you're ballyhooing your sauces. Um Morty Vickers says you must repent. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Um Yeah. Mm-hmm. I tell you. That actually made my day. <laughs> it really did. That's what they came up in the uh came up with in the the master strategy session. <laughs> Vickers says, I think you can eat fish nuggets. Oh, those are good. Those are delicious. Yes. Well, I like the fish nuggets. They're, they're tasty. They're very, very tasty. I like at the fish place when they cook the uh, fries in the in the fish oil. That's awesome. That is awesome. Although, at a lot of these fast food restaurants, when it's time to take the fries out of the basket or the fish out of the basket or turn the hamburgers over, they play beeps. There's beeping noises. And that's bound to drive away business. Because you know how the average person cannot handle beeps why it's it's just like fingernails on a chalkboard it's the most <laughs> oh dear Steffi Lindley says fish sticks will forever make me think of South Park don't really like fish sticks for some reason. Not a fan of the fish stick. I, I go back and forth on the filet of fish sandwich. Most of the time, no. Every now and then. It really hits the spot. <laughs> oh, brother. The great Nate will be with us in one hour. And we'll discuss things as only the great Nate can. Dolores, told, uh, Dolores Colbert says, Give me a tuna sandwich any day. Well, you can tuna piano, but you can't tuna fish. A tuna sandwich. Do you put the mayo and the relish in with it, Dolores? Like most people. Fish, oh, filet of fish, yeah. Arby's fish sandwich is decent too. I don't go to Arby's. I will not go to Arby's. I don't know why. I'm just never in a roast beef whatever else they got there. I'm just not into it. I just don't need it. I'm not... I'm not craving that. It's not, not what I'm into. It's just not what I'm... <laughs> Sorry, I was leaving the card up because I'm laughing. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, let's see. Nate's all about the on the, the with the one. I don't think he was. And here's the beauty part about Nate. If he was, he would say so. I mean, he really would. But I don't think he was. I think he was using uh, the wrong mic in his office. 
you know, but <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Nate is a fine man. And he would. He'd say, you know, well, I'm in here dropping a deuce. Um, Steffi Lindley says, don't we all wish we could be in that position right now, though? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm good. Diana O'Brien says, I've only just gotten notification. I'm sorry, Diana. You didn't miss anything. Um... Let's see. S. Burke 22 says their Mediterranean is really good. Mediterranean what? Like the actual thing? Oh, bloop, bloop. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what to say about that. I try to spend as little time as possible with that. Try to, you know, just... Uh, Midnight Shepherd wants to know what's the difference between a fish, a piano, and a tube of glue. I'm bracing myself for the uh, answer. The Mediterranean is a wrap. At Arby's? I haven't been in ages, so I don't know what they got. I... I, I gotta be in the mood for a wrap. I just couldn't you make it into a sandwich? Couldn't you just go ahead and or a salad or whatever? <sighs> I just don't go there. Steffi, uh, I, I'm not going to answer that question. I'm just saying it's it's not a focus of you know I I spend the requisite amount of time but I'm not uh, I'm not throwing a parade or anything I'm not oh yeah because I know some people really that's a thing for them but and that shipper says you can tune a piano but you can't tune a fish I just said that you could buy some fresh bread and swap it. I could, or I could just make my own, or any number of other things. But all the places where you can get a wrap, you can get a salad with the same thing in it. I mean, it's they're not really. If you like wraps, go ahead and like them. I'm just saying, I'm I'm not a not a big fan. Yeah, some read the entire paper in there. Some spend, you know. Spent half a day in there. I know. Not my thing. If you do, and you enjoy that sort of thing, hey, please, more power to you. You know? More power to you. I just, I don't. I don't. I'm thinking some of you people are getting a little too... A little too cocky, a little too out of line. So, it's just I'm just thinking that. Or grow it and butcher it. Yeah, I could do that too. What happened to me yesterday wasn't holy, says uh, Midnight Shepherd. Well, well, there you go. Some of you people get a little too big for your britches, and well, we got a solution for that. I'll tell you what. I know you get stuck on the glue, Dolores. Steffi Lindley says, I don't, I don't have kids, so my bathroom time is bubble bath time. Well, I know a lot of people with kids take bubble baths. It's their Calgon take me away time. I don't understand baths either. I'm a shower guy. I don't really want to sit and... Oh, yeah, you people that are getting out of line. All right, here, here's, here's your punishment. Hi, and welcome to Tom Gully Show. You're on the air. 
Yes, take that, you people getting out of line. Yes, take that. Yes, and, and one more for good measure. Yeah, that'll show you. That'll show you. Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, that'll teach you. That'll teach you. Uh-huh. You had it coming. Don't act like you didn't. <laughs> uh, we here at the Tom Gully Show have been pioneering a new piece of technology. And it's revolutionary. You know, didn't take that long to actually create. Let's see here. Dolores says, I can feel the healing from the beeps. Yeah, good on you, Tom. You're welcome. Uh, Jade says she loves bubble baths. Billy Boy is still MIA. I can't stick with that right now. I just can't. I can't investigate it. I don't. He was in here yesterday. Being Wild Bill. And he complained about the other name. So I can't, I'll look into it after. I can't even, you know. He, he, he sometimes, and this is a weekend when he's got visitors. So sometimes he watches on his big TV and he can't, he's watching, but he can't be here. And I can't like in advance wonder if somebody, I mean, there's plenty of days he doesn't come in here and talk. So I can't, I can't, I just can't right now. I can't. I appreciate the heads up, Marty, but I, I just, I can't. Not right now. Not, not when I've got these beeps to contend with. Certainly you can tell how off my game the, the beeps have thrown me. Good Lord. They're just, they're just, it's shell shock in here right now. These beeps, maybe the beeps have, have banned him. I don't know. See, they've got us sniping at each other. It, it, these beeps have just created a, a, just a totally untenable work environment. Oh, how can we possibly go on, you know, with, with these beeps? <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe he's around maybe he's not if I really had the time I'd get on my phone and I but I don't Midnight Shepherd says all right Tom I'll stay in line I'm sorry already I'm not mad at you Morty I just can't you're the greatest you know that you know I got your back Dolores says, yes, please don't spoil my buzz. I just had a wonderful, pleasant day with Mr. Germany. Over Zoom or something? Or is he there? You had a Guten Tag. Auf Herr, Germ uh, Herr Deutschland. Did you? Yeah, sometimes uh, Wild Bill watches on his big TV and he, he doesn't have the... And I, I don't think he's using his iPad. Fill you in on the beeps. Also known as Coach Chino. <laughs> uh, Jade, uh, what's there to fill you in on? There, obviously, uh, anyone with with any semblance of knowledge of the world as we know it, know that those are the most invasive, uh, abusive, confidence-shattering things. You know, Dolores says, messenger to death. I'm sure there's some people in the room that are friends of, of Wild Bill that could message him on Facebook. But, you know. It's, 
There's lots of times he's not in here. I reinstated his backup name. So that's available to him. Yesterday it seemed quite important <laughs> that backup name, but uh, today it may have fallen further down the, the wayside as a what should I say to Bill? Can we not really seriously I can't emphasize enough how during the show I can't solve your communication issues. I really can't. I wish that I could, but I can't. It it's it's before the show, it's after the show. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's okay. <laughs> it's it's these it's these beeps. Uh, oh, for Christ's sakes. Look, I don't want to hear any more about Wild Bill and and him logging in. I I really don't. I'm j ju I just don't. Oh, for God's sakes. <sighs> Jesus criminy. No, no, let me take care of it. For God's sakes. Show's on for two hours a day. That leaves me with 22 hours. He linked them. I don't know that you can link them. Either way, the other one is fine. My God. No, 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 no. Let's just grind things to a crashing halt. I got these beeps to worry about. I got stories. I got great Nate in 45 minutes. But let's make sure somebody who frequently doesn't come in has the ability to come into the show. For the love of God. And I'm going to check this thing, and it's going to be fine. And that's going to tick me off times 10. No, no. No, no. Let's all have a big... <laughs> Please. Oh, God. No, no, no. Let's, let's not just live our lives. and You know, let's see here. Let me go down this list. God knows I I don't have enough to do right now. He's not even on here. Neither is his other name. I took it off yesterday. Like I said from the start. Let me double double check. That's not him. No, that's not him either. Let me double octo. These beeps to handle. Let's see here. And. Uh, no, there. No. Mother. Let's see here. Come here now, my friend. Happy Friday. Yeah, wouldn't it be great if it was a happy Friday? But we've got beeps. Yeah, there's beeps to contend with here. Plus other things. You could say ten times, I can't screw with that right now. No, hope he's okay. Now we've got him bleeding in a ditch. He's probably just, he gets a pizza on Friday night and has dinner with his wife. We all know this. The white pizza. 
with chicken and the, the, the feta and the Alfredo. Dolores says, this stuck ship in the Suez Canal is starting to make me crack up. Ah, whatever. People got problems everywhere. I got beeps. What do I care about a ship stuck in the Suez? What do I care? Reverend White, Wild Bill might be dismembered. Two days in a row. We got to worry about this crap. Two days in a row. Hey, my backup name I never use isn't working. I entered the room and said something nasty as a joke, and I got banned. Maybe you should use your regular name. That's all I was saying. Yeah. Because I haven't found you on Facebook yet, Dolores. Dolores with her traditional... How do I match up with people? Chat. I love you guys to death. See, here we go. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. So we got an incoming call. It's going to take a second. Is this Wild Bill? Not yet it isn't it will in a second. Uh, let's see here. He'll be on in a second. Uh, yeah, how you doing? Man, tell those people quit worrying about me. I I tried to. You know, and, and they bother they bothering you to death. I just told I just went ahead and I, I I, I sent uh, Morty a message and just told him, said, look, me and Tom will discuss it this weekend. Yeah. When I talk to him live. <laughs> no, we're talking now. Hey, I, so man, can... What it is, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. No. I know what I'm under right now is the Reverend or the R-E-V dot Wild Bill. That's my name on, on YouTube now. And it's got me in my okay. black Hold. motorcycle jacket. <sighs> So don't worry about it. Find it later. I mean, I'm still working. Well, I can find it office. now. It's Ooh. just, Ooh. I wish I knew that. Because well, I, I, cause I thought, I, I saw that and I thought it was an imposter. No, that one's me. The Reverend Wild Bill. Yeah, the REV dot. Jacket. I saw it and I thought, well, that's not him because he's just Reverend Wild Bill. One thing. Well, everybody keeps on going the Reverend Wild Bill, so I figured, what the hell, I'll put it in there from now on. So, yeah, so that's, okay, that's what's been screwing up everything, and it didn't have my normal picture with it either. No, it didn't. No, nah, this one right here is when I had shorter hair. You know, and have, you know uh, what? I got on a black Harley jacket. You know what? You're like Jennifer Grey. You, you, okay. star, you star in Dirty Dancing with the big nose. And we all fall in love with you, and then you get your nose fixed, and nobody can recognize you. It's, it's the same thing, man. It's the exact same it, it thing. It could be. It could be. Now, I tell you what, it, what, what threw you off is I'm a little slimmer in this picture now. That's what, that's what throws you off. Now, if I was to uh, show you back on back. The picture's like the size back, of it. Oh, I'd be, you'd, you'd be going, that ain't Wild Bill at all. That's not him at all. Uh, but it is. It is, but yeah, I guess okay. So what it was? You thought I, you thought the other one was an imposter, but yeah, that that is me though. Yeah, so. I don't know how I assumed the name you've been using for two solid years would be three or better. <laughs> or for, well, Wild Bill, now, hold it now Wild Bill, I've been using that now for wow yeah. about forty years now. Yeah. All right. But, yeah, with you, though, but with you, yeah, that's about two to three years now that I've been using it with you, yeah. So you were used to just Wild Bill. Yeah, hold on here. And then Reverend, and then later on on YouTube, it came on as Reverend Wild Bill. Let me see how I can find it And you got used to that one. I did. But just everybody, but everybody just kept talking about the Reverend Wild Bill, so I figured, what the hell, I'll throw the in there. You can't, what, you can't change your whole... Up. <laughs> you can't change your whole persona, and uh, you know. Anyway, hold on a second. Oh, should I should I take D off then? No, 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 don't change anything. 
I got it fixed. I'm gonna keep it as, gonna keep it as the Reverend Wild Bill. I, I got you fixed. Now on, from now on, that's it. Because <laughs> you always go, this is the Reverend Wild Bill, and then everybody else does it. So I just say, what the well, hell? Don't, the don't go Wild by me. Bill. Morty Vicker says I think Rev is more of a Jennifer Aniston myself. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, okay, well, you know that that sounds good to me, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ms. Colbert, don't post any of your personal information in the room. That's a bad idea for anybody, right? Per- yeah, you don't post personal nothing. Yeah, not in here, not right now. Not ever, really, but... I don't, I don't. It, 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 no, it can be used against you in some ways that you don't want. Yeah, the, the Bill, Bill just proposed his impersonal information and diana bryant says we love the reverend wild bill so i fixed it okay yeah i fixed it at at great expense to me i'm sorry it wasn't my fault well yeah it was my fault plus we got we got these beeps and you know how they always put me on edge you know how they bother me badly yeah yeah yeah. you know because because who wouldn't that just drive into a a frenzy there he is. Okay. There he is. Now, huh? There he is. There's the man. And you change the picture and everything else. It's Well, that's going to stay there because that's me prettier. Yeah, it is. It is. I was prettier then. That was about... That was about... Uh, that was only probably about six years ago. That wasn't too long ago. You realize it's like less than a quarter of an inch high for me when I'm looking at it so I can't tell what yeah, you Yeah, until you until you go to the profile itself, yeah. right, I know. Yeah. But it's just all it is is just the upper part I'm in a Harley I'm in a Harley leather Harley jacket. Well actually it's not a Harley. But it's that style jacket. It's a black buffalo skin uh motorcycle jacket. And then my hair's cut shorter and that's about it. You know, and I'm kind of I ain't got no beard, it's just a mustache. I'm I'm kind of Morty Vickers is that stash, bro. But I'm kind of glad this happened in a way because there's somebody in the room, and I'm not going to mention who, uh, they know who they are, that have expressed to me on occasion that they really like it when I get all cranky. That they very much like it when I get all bent out of shape. So you've entertained one of the people in the room here this afternoon. Well, good. good. Or or my stupidity. One person today on the Tom Gully Show was entertained, and that's more than we usually get. I know. I, I mean, you know, I, I you know why I go to the Tom Gully show. You click it the. Works my, it works with my meds. You click the uh, Google "I don't feel lucky" button. Yeah, yeah, and then it goes straight to the Tom Gully show, and then says, "Here, try this with your sleeping pill." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the Tom Gully show is the world's only known cure for insomnia. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But, but I am, I am, I am really glad though we were able to get this worked out though. I am too. Because uh, I, it just didn't feel right that I couldn't con- that I couldn't come in. Yes. Well. It, so and, and then it, it I, and then I didn't like it that it was just getting you aggravated because when I jumped on I heard this stuff going on. About, I mean, because I was on the pre-show earlier and then I came back just now because I was checking out something else because. Miss Mel, oh, by the way, on that white pizza deal. Yeah. We stopped going to that place. You got kind of pissed off while Bill. Oh, that's right. I remember you told us about that. Mm-hmm. He wants to give me three or four different prices for the same day gun pizza. He can take <laughs> that beat and stick it up his wahoo, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I like a good white Greek pizza, but I'm not dying for one. <laughs> and my money spends good everywhere else. So I lived know, a hey. lot of years before I had that pizza. That's right. Yeah. It ain't going to kill me. Yeah. It ain't going to kill me not to have it. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, that just all that just means is that I've just got to try to find another place to get one. That's all it is. And, hey, you they know, next place I find, next place I find might be better. It might be. Know? It might be. It might be. Might well, be. we will uh, talk privately this weekend. I guarantee that. Yeah, yeah, because grandkids are here. Yes. 
grandkids are down this weekend, so I will be shouting at you. I'll be on right after the show I'll, tomorrow morning, so and much yeah, I'll, throughout I'll need, the week. I need some kind of relief. Yeah, I'll be watching you on the weekend uh, special edition tomorrow. For sure. Okay, know that. sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me let you get back to your feet and. In you the beach. Tell everybody out there not to worry about Wild Bill. He's not laying in no ditch, dead nowhere. <laughs> now the person I came up against might be laying in the ditch, but yeah. I'm not. Okay. And uh, I'm doing fine. And I'm back with the Tom Gully show. And due to my stupidity, that uh, I would, I, I, I had myself banned, and then, and then I just screwed up everything by changing stuff. So I just, okay. I just flabbergasted Mr. Tom. It was Gully. probably my fault somehow. No, 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 it was my fault. I mean, you know, I changed my picture, which screwed you up. Yeah. I added the, I added the on there, which screwed you up. I got the... And with all the... Well, it really didn't screw you up. What it was is you thought, like you said, you thought I was one of these fake people that's been coming in lately. Yeah. You know, you just thought I was one of these fake ones. And yeah, I got used to the Richard Petty picture. Yeah, yeah, well, I had to, I had to get, I mean, yeah... I had to get rid of that one. Now I still got the Richard Petty on the Facebook. Yeah. But uh, with the with the with the uh, Indiana Jones hat on. Yeah. But uh, the but the go to hell hat and the uh, ponytail. Yeah. The side view one. Yeah, I figured that showed my that showed my ski ramp nose off too much, so I wanted to kind of <laughs> change it and kind of get more of a frontal view. You know, I just didn't like that. Side profiles just ain't good with me, you know, because right. you know Richard Nixon had a nose. Yes. Well, Jimmy you know, Durante had a big nose. Now mine is somewhere in between Jimmy Durante's and uh, Bob Hope. Nixon's nose. Oh, okay. Nixon. Yeah, right. probably closer to Bob Hope. Yeah, yeah. That would be more like mine. But but you know, my daddy told me why it was why my nose was so big. You know why? Why? Because air is free. There you go. Well, you know, I blame I blame all this on the beeps. Those things have just, you know, those are, those are known to just throw things into chaos because they're so hurtful and aggravating. What are the, What are those? What are they? I don't know. It's a fax machine or something. I don't wow. know. I don't care. Just somebody calling up, putting it through, huh? Yeah, you know, because that's that's effective. Well, you know, I guess if you can't say nothing, I guess you might as well do something to be irritating, I guess. It's you know? not irritating. It's They're more to be pitied than feared. So, anyway, well, it's man. It's irritating. The people aren't. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We will uh, talk to you later, Mr. Gully. All right. We'll talk tomorrow. I'll talk to you later. All right. Dude. All right. Bye-bye. That's the Reverend Wild Bill. Morty, you were right all along. I, I don't know why I ever doubt you. It's a fool's folly to doubt Morty Vicker. Uh, Diana says, nothing fake about the Reverend Wild Bill. No, there is not. Diana Bryce says, I just had pizza. Mm -mm. I'm having fried chicken again. Uh, must have grown since I said the beep is R2-D2 calling. Oh, if only it was. If only it was. Although I'm not a Star Wars guy. So, I'd rather have a tricorder calling in, I think. Probably be better. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that straightened out. Mm. I would have hated to do that off the air. Anyway. Uh, I tell you, it's just Friday. It's just another Friday, folks. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Morty Vicker says they are really old. You'd think trolls would evolve, but they still stay lazy. Wish they would be more creative. I know it. Well, they're not happy. They're just not happy. Reverend Wild Bill says, And Bob's your uncle. I went into my settings. I found the Reverend. Clicked a little click button. And Bob's your uncle. Midnight Shepherd says, This is not the shepherd you're looking for. I'm not looking for a shepherd. I'm not. I'm not. 
But they had their big meeting. They had probably diagrams, far off, high hope plans and schemes and strategies they came up with the beeps <laughs> which is uh, the call in equivalent of I'm rubber you're glue what you say bounces off me and sticks to you it's actually a couple notches below that but anyway Morty Vicker says, it's a trap. It's a trap. Don't answer the beeps. We got uh, the great Nate in 27 minutes. Network programming begins in uh, 11 and a half minutes. Let me see here. I better get my song queued up. Might as well queue up my song. Get that out of the way. Oh, brother. i tell you nobody's ever looking for me though now midnight that's there's one you only you only get two per show next week you're only going to get one we're going to wean you back we're going we're to wean you slowly back you were doing great at the hashtag at the beginning of the show but now you're starting to backslide you're backsliding a little ain't going to be no backsliding in here Mm -mm. Uh, the Reverend Wild Bill says lightning struck our house this morning and blew up my gateway slash modem just got it fixed an hour ago well maybe maybe that gateway did it to you Morty Vicker's watching Morty Vicker has you know strict orders only two depressingly self-deprecating comments per show for you just the two. You got one left. The song, the song, can't resist the song. Yeah, somebody who listens, their dog loves the song. The dog's crazy about the song. I think uh, Randy Ramos' cat runs out of the room. Uh, so there you go. Diane O'Brien says the fool's will out themselves eventually. Perhaps they're not self-aware, just saying. Well, some of them may already have... Never mind. Never mind. We'll save that for later. Uh, ten minutes, actually nine and a half, till we get going here. But uh, we've got stories of an amazing Goodwill find. We've got uh, an update on your asteroid safety. And then we've got Quentin Tarantino's top 10 movies of all time. Reverend Wild Bill says, Morticia, that's his attack tarantula, loves the Tom Gully show song. You know, most animals love it. There's a few that, that don't. Chef is MIA too. Must be elbows deep in the sushi. Sushi. Yes, I, fi I figure that's what he's got going on. Because this is, you know, the big nights are Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, And this is um, week two there. No, no, I think this might be like week one of full operation. So uh, Dolores says, damn, it's hot in here today. <laughs> oh, it's hot there today where you're at. Well, that's going to happen. It's not, well, actually, I think it's probably approaching pleasantness here oh, let's see what we got going on i haven't been out i have no plans to go out oh, it's only 39 here today and we got wind on monday but we're still not out of the 30s for a high temperature so steffi says mm, sushi with lots of wasabi and pickled ginger wasabi is ugh. Reverend Wild Bill says, we've already turned on our AC here in Georgia. I'm not looking at any AC for quite some time. For quite some time. There you go, Midnight. He says the reason it's hot is because he's here. See, that's more in keeping with what we're looking for. 
That's what we like to see, a good and healthy sense of self-confidence. Uh, let me see here. I'm getting a message from some important people I chatted with today. Yes. This ought to be good. Let's just see here what they have to say. Oh, well. Oh, yes. That's exciting news. Well, things are moving forward quite nicely. Quite nicely. Nicely, nicely. For those of you familiar with Guys and Dolls. Nicely, nicely. Excellent. Excellent. I don't need that anymore. Awesome. Awesome. Dinah Bryan says heat wave forecast, so they stay say here next week. That would be welcomed. Excellent, Diana. Steffi Lindley says I haven't turned on my AC on today. I need to clean the filters first. Boy, the riveting news that we give you here on a daily basis on the Tom Gully Show. It's just... Uh, well, Diana, aren't you guys like six weeks ahead of us? Like June bugs over there called May bugs in Germany and all that stuff. I think you're uh, ahead of us. The Reverend Wild Bill says, I'm so happy I could just... You guys can, you guys can fill that in on your own. I don't know anyone by that name. Uh, Dolores Colbert says, 77 here now. I'll take some of that cool snow air. You're welcome to all of it. Uh, Midnight says, Tom got approved for the promotion. Uh, no, that wasn't it. It wasn't it. It's better news than that. Some people looking into some things. And it's very good news. Very, very. Let me see here. That. Oh, come on now. Don't be like that. All of that rigmarole made me have to do things. But we're still good. We're still good. All right. Uh, no, I'm I'm just joking, Steffi. I'm about, and I am fully on board with you cleaning your filters. Don't get the idea that I don't care about your filters. I do. I do. Diana Bryan says, still a bit cold at night. The Reverend Wild Bill says, I got your promotion right here. Uh, Midnight Shepherd says, fill that in. That's what she said. Yes. Phrasing. We didn't do any yesterday for Jessica Walter. That'll be our phrasing for the day. Can we get just a little more beeps? Just a little touch more. Oh, I hear noises in the background. Yeah, there's like rumbling, a little bunkety clunk. It's so she God damn it. I love your show, Tom. Bye. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's the beeps we wanted there you go are you ignorant yeah, okay that's a yes uh, are you no life yeah a total loser not creative to come up with anything really bothersome yeah okay I guess we got affirmatives to all those It's okay, because somewhere they're just going, we did it, we did it, we did it. Sh yeah, you sure did, Cupcake. You yeah, boy, you showed me. You really showed me. I guess I'm no match for you. <laughs> I'm no match for your devilish wit. Let's see here. That's a very slow heat rate. Reverend Wild Bill says that sounded like a southern bell, a real ding a -ling. Well, they did say they like the show, so I'm sure they have a smart friend explaining it to them. See now what that man 
hillbilly law clearly states. Um, so it's Suchi. <laughs> Sounded like Rosie. <laughs> Did it? It might have been. I don't know. They were fine. There's nothing wrong with that call at all. Let me see here. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe it was Rosie. <laughs> oh, I wish you would have stayed and talked. <laughs> Although I have less than two minutes until network. Rosie's laughing. She has a terrible. She has a terrible man. It's just terrible. Terrible southern accent. Terrible. <laughs> uh, really? Oh man, I love a Friday show. I just love one. Rev on Bill says in the news today from Possum Holler is the dog food killed old Jake. <laughs> Well, Jake's constitution wouldn't take none of that fancy store-bought dog food with that little Perina checkerboard on it. That fancy store-bought, high-tone, putting on airs. We told Uncle Jake not to eat the dog food. <laughs> He just wouldn't listen. Man, you ever been at somebody's house and they got small children and the kids get into the dog food or cat food and you're just like, man, uh, come on. I know it looks and tastes and it's got the, the texture of cereal, but stop it. Morty Vickers says, that's Suchi, Tom. Love your show. Bye. <laughs> All right, we got 10 seconds here. We might as well. Uh, buckle in and get ready for big time entertainment. Tom Gully rides the waves like a social airplane, and you know that he is not winning, not until you know his name. Soon he'll be far away, and we'll have to run this race as long as we should never underestimate. Someone who knows his place unlike Tom Gully. Ooh, the social airplane that is Tom Gully. Ooh, come on now, look at my Gully. Tom Gully. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. What is your motto here? Boys, inform on your classmates. Save your hide. Anything short of that, we're going to burn you at the stake? Warriors, come out to play. Oh, you all talk big. But who here has the guts to stop me? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Do not content. Parental discretion is advised. I'm gonna give you a little touch up. A little touch up. Just a little touch up for you. Ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, prepare for entertainment. It's time for the Tom Gully Show. And now, here he is, a very special man, Tom Gully. Hi, I am Tom Gully, and I am a very special man. I'm so special, some of my longtime listeners frequently change their name, picture, and other things. Yeah. It happens. It's it's like they're a model. They may go down to one name, like Cher. Hard to say. Hey, thanks for watching us live on YouTube. 
could have found out about it on uh, the Tom Gully Show Facebook page, SonicAsylumRadio.com's Facebook page. You might just be listening to us. Nothing wrong with just listening. It's always on this program except for Fridays when the great Nate calls in, like today. You could have called in actually during our pre-show with beeps or any question, topic, or subject you wanted, including but not limited to automotive, lawn and garden, home improvement, personal relationships, and of course, the ever popular hygiene. Real absolute zeros are welcome. As long as they don't, you know, violate any precepts of the law. Um, all you gotta do is normally other days, except for Friday, just today, Call the number at the bottom of the screen if you're watching us, or why even repeat it for the networks? We're not taking calls. Because we got the great Nate. Stories today, yeah, we got them. We're going to tell you about a giant find at Goodwill, your asteroid safety for the next 100 years, and Quentin Tarantino's top 10 movies, and now musical fanfare. Oh, that's top quality fanfare. Yeah. As always, in our YouTube chat room, we do have the finest human beings in the history of mankind on Earth. Oh, you betcha. Morty Vicker is here. He is the sultan of the outdoor grill. And he's, he's kind of right about everything. And I need to get used to that. Uh, Dolores Colbert, international woman of mystery, is here. We, of course, have Rosie Williams, who made a... I would say a quick hit and run call at the end of our bonus content exclusive YouTube pre show today, which starts about an hour and 15 minutes before this, our regular program. And uh, guess what? We also have the Reverend Wild Bill. That's his new full name with the new, you know, more dashing picture. Uh, we also have, uh, oh, brother, we have uh, Diana O'Brien in here. We have Thomas Hamilton from Glasgow, Scotland. It's a great lad. He's one of our mates. We have uh, Midnight Shepherd, who's um, down to one depressingly self-deprecating comment for the remainder of the show. And others, I'm sure. Steffi Lindley from Nashville. Some call it Cashville. She's not chopped liver. And that's what we got here. We got comments spilling over from our pre-show. Uh, Allie McWild Bill in the house, says Morty Vicker. Stephanie Lindley curtsies, says happy, happy it's Friday. Not Friday, but fry yay. And uh, that's about uh, the size of things as we begin, begin our fi Friday program. Uh, uh, just a quick programming note. We'd like to remind you that tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. over in the U.K. and Ireland, we'll be having another of our weekend special edition U.K. lockdown shows. Please tune in as we cover weird news I found on websites from the United Kingdom, although some of it comes from here. And then also uh, I'll update you on... Uh, the last 15 minutes of Wonder Woman, probably. The 70s version. Linda Carter. Where we'll, she will be horribly condescended to by men. Even though she's the only one that actually saves anybody or does anything. Oh, hold on. The goofy guy's having a conversation. I don't know how, since he just wanders around, but seems to be over now. He seems, it seems to be over now. Tara Strom says she can't wait for the movie talk. Well, Tara, the great Nate will be with us in eight minutes, and then we'll start doing the news. And the very last story will be the movie thing. Sorry. That was last Friday, Tara. 
Although if Tara asks us something while we're talking, we, we may just launch into it. Who knows? Midnight Shepherd says, this just in, a shepherd that appears at midnight has returned. Okay, that's, that's, that's not depressingly self-deprecating. We will allow that comment. I am you know, authorizing that comment. Mm-hmm. At any rate, uh, let's see here. We had we had beeping in our pre-show. It was uh, diabolically effective. There's probably some subliminal messaging in it. And now I want a milkshake real bad, but I, I kind of always want a milkshake, so that may not have been related to the beeping. All right. There's like a 99% chance it wasn't, but... Um, yeah, so we had that going for us, and uh, more Vickers says, Oh, wow, new movie topic. My bad, Tara. I missed that one. Yeah, uh, Quentin Tarantino's top 10 of all time. Midnight Shepherd said, My phone died, had to switch to my tablet. Well, not fond of the tablet. Um, I went ahead and just switched to my phone because it works. Tablets, they're just toy computers, you know. Yay, movie talk. Well, if you like it. If you like it, you know, we got it there for you. It's there for you. Tarantino's my favorite director, so I'm anxious to hear what he has to say. And we all know he has a voluminous knowledge of movies so and, and he's not likely to pick out normal stuff may a couple of them will be normal but uh, midnight shepherd says of course you never know where I'll, I'll appear at midnight no we certainly do not we certainly do not i usually at midnight i'm waiting an hour for hill street blues to come on that's what i'm doing at midnight but Anyway, oh, I didn't I didn't prepare with enough beverage. What a critical error that was. Mm. I may have to make Nate vamp for me while I go get go get more beverage. Morty says Quentin is one of my favorites too. There's a really awesome, like, two-hour podcast he did with some guys right before or right as um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was released. And they get into a bunch of subjects, and he likes these guys. He, he's uh, trusting of them. He, he thinks their, their movie knowledge and their, you know, what they're doing is really cool. So he stays a long time like way past when he was supposed to. And he just keeps talking. And it's great. Midnight Shepherd says that was the only, that one time, that was only that one time Dolores and I was drunk. Plus you dare me to. Okay. Dolores says as long as you don't try to swallow it. Um, Tara Strom says Quentin is an okay producer. I don't know, man. He's produced some pretty awesome stuff, man. But you're entitled to your opinion. He just, he's the only one in Hollywood that's making any interesting movies. He doesn't make movies like everybody else. They don't look like the same things, you know? I mean, uh, Scorsese, yeah. Um, Scorsese. I mean, it, there's just not that many directors that, that are doing anything interesting. There's, you know, Michael Bay's got his whole thing, and I dig all the the panorama there's some other directors that have done some really great movies lately i'm not saying there aren't uh i'm just saying he's never going to do things conventionally and i think that just makes him more interesting he doesn't you know he's not a slave to conventional narrative uh he, he's just he's just very skilled and uh Doing cool stuff. Steffi Lindley says, Four rooms, the scene with the kids in the hotel room with mentholatum <laughs> Um Morty says, Midnight got tricked into the, you know what, pick. 
Rosie says, Quentin loves the feet. I've heard that about things, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Morty Vicker says, what are you talking about, Tom? Are you forgetting M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong? I, I hate all his movies. Seriously, I haven't seen one that I can sit through. I just recently got the third. Is it called Glass or something? I mean... Uh, the whole unbreakable thing, and and I tried to watch it, you know. Uh, Tara Storm says Quentin lived with his mom and only took his father's name because he was a popular actor director. Was he that popular? Was he really? I mean, I mean, you know, uh, all yeah, all. I had a girlfriend that wanted me to watch The Sixth Sense. And is that what it's called? And like 20 minutes into the movie, I went, Bruce Willis is dead. She got all upset. She got really mad. I better start getting ready for the great name. I better start prepping... For the one, the only, the great Nate. You know what? I gotta get it. I gotta get a title card for the great Nate. I think he's earned his own title card. By golly, I'll try to create one of those for him before next Friday. I will try. Oh dear me. Oh boy. Oh man, oh, man. somebody just. T- Change their profile picture, and uh, <laughs> I know it's meant for comedic effect, but for the love of Mike, oh boy, oh boy, let's see here. Uh, wow, well, I'm gonna have to put the wow on there. All right, let's see here. I got a notification. All right, nobody cares about that. It's just, why don't we just tee up the great... No, it's time for him now, so... There he is. Let's just go ahead and start our confab with the great Nate. Let's see if I can get a hold of him here. We put another $25 in our Dialing for Dollars jackpot. If you can tell us the trivia question from our afternoon movie... You'll win the entire jackpot. $75. Sorry, old time TV talk. Is this the great Tom Gully? Yeah, it is. This must be the great Nate. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good. I can howl. Ow! <laughs> it's good. Good day. Did you do the thing Let you... Let me st- tell you. Did you do the thing you said you were going to do when we were talking earlier? Oh, yes. I might even made it to the one we didn't think I was going to make it to. Oh, I didn't. I've been here the whole time since then. Uh, <laughs> let me get through some of these comments. Uh, Steffi Lindley says, I think Signs is a brilliant movie, but the rest aren't really memorable. I hated that. Yes, The Sixth Sense, says Morty. Stephanie Lindley says, Rosie, I can still watch Signs over and over. It's aged well, in my opinion. If you guys like it, then more power to you. But, oh, Rosie says she watched it last night with my girls. What do you think of those the movies by M. Night Shyamalan? Well, unfortunately, I'm not a fan. Me neither. I, I, I mean, I do like the, the original, uh, what was it called? Breaking or something like that. Yeah, Unbreakable. Unbreakable, thank you. I did think that that was a, a, a way better, smarter idea than Six Cents, only because that's a one-trick pony. Yeah. Which makes these twists that he puts in there... Yeah. ...makes it a one-trick pony. For the, You know, it's like after I've watched it, there's no viability to go back or, or want to go back. And our need, I guess, is... is yeah, you know, you have people nowadays where we have movies that have well, well over, you know, two hundred Easter eggs throughout the movie. Yeah, you know, and still not giving away. You know, still not giving away. It's, I mean, it, 
you know, it's kind of like, you know, blowing your nose before you meet, you have slot, you know? Yeah. I just, I was telling everybody, I, I watched The Sixth Sense with a girlfriend and 20 minutes in, I went, Bruce Willis is dead. And she yelled at me, you ruined the whole thing. You ruined it. I said, you've seen it before. I know, but I want to just see you get the whole ending discovery. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. Six Sense is decent. Signs, I guess. I just I couldn't get into the story. I didn't care. So there's things in the crops. Who gives a darn? And But I did like Unbreakable. I thought that that was a relatively good movie. I, I can't say I didn't hate it. Can't say I hated it. Sorry. Well, what it was about that movie also was there was some beautiful uh, art uh, that where Mister Glass lived. Yeah. And, or, or his his shop and what he was selling and I mean that yeah. part of it I had I, it, it, and it was really what I forget what year that came out but I don't think like superhero films were. I think about no. the X Men films. You yeah, know? yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the original X Men film. Rosie says I can uh, always and- watch Bruce Willis. Please don't kill us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, now I'll tell you where you know where my favorite thing yeah. with Bruce Willis is with yeah. your favorite director. Yeah. It's four rooms. Oh yeah. His uh, his his that whole thing, and what I love about it is Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino took a script from the Twilight Zone and made it. Yep. You know, sort of, kind of, actually, because, uh, you know, in the Twilight Zone version, the TV version, she comes in and goes, he he keeps doing it. (laughs) Yeah. Tara Storm says uh, Bruce Bruce is the man. He's good in uh, Planet uh, Terror, which, of course, is Rodriguez, but... Uh, he's also good. Well, Pulp Fiction. Come on, man. Well, he's a good he, he's a good actor throughout his career. Yeah. But right now, in my opinion only, he's phoning it in on most of the movies he's doing. I don't know, man. I saw that last Die Hard one over in Russia. I thought he was great in it, and I also thought he was great in uh, the Death Wish movie. Marty Pig. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I haven't seen those yet. So. Well, it has Amanda Shue in it, so Elizabeth Shue or whatever her name is. Um, Morty Vickers says Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to. Well, you know the end. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, where's my thing here? Okay, so probably we got to go on to the news. I probably got a news sound effect here I need to put in uh, I don't think I have any Bruce Willis ones I should have yippee ki but I don't uh, let's see here um, well this one might be okay here we go let's see here hey Tom did I tell you uh, that you I figured stu- something out that's kind of fun to me you, you, you didn't but I but- put a button shut okay no, no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, so I, I've, I've decided that, you know, as much chance as there is in this world, that if you have a, a button on your on your desk, every so often you should hit it because, uh, and look around and see if it changed anything. <laughs> you know, just keep hitting the mother. Yeah. Until either your hand is... No, and then you're ready for other things. <laughs> you you've had quite an afternoon, haven't you? <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, you just stepped on my sound effect. Here, hold on. Here's my sound effect. You are out of here. All right, there you go. There's my sound effect for the day. That's great. All right, let's get to one of these news stories real fast. We can get to the, so we can get to the Tarantino top ten movies of all time, and it's not his top movies; it's he, what he thinks are the top ten of all time. 
So I thought that would be oh, interesting. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, the, the funny thing is, is we'll, we'll know maybe two or three of them. No, no. We'll, like, we'll, no, like the average person. Well, no, I'll know all of them. But, you know. And you'll know all of them, too, I bet. I bet. You might not have seen them, but yeah, you'll, well, you'll know. Yeah, well, but... I'd be, I'm interested, so I'm excited. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Hold on. Oh, man. Too much Coke Zero. A Goodwill employee in Oklahoma has been rewarded for helping to return a huge bundle of cash that was accidentally donated with some old clothes. Andrea Lessing recently discovered the money while sorting through a pile of donations at her Goodwill location in Norman, Oklahoma, but didn't immediately realize what she'd stumbled upon as the bills were wrapped up in two old sweaters. At first, Lessing thought they might be books, but further inspection revealed a much more valuable fine, $42,000 in crisp bills. I don't see if I can do a female Oklahoma. I never expected anything like this to happen to me, of all people. To me, it was just any other normal day at work. I was in the back sorting. I never expected to come across $42,000. Lessing, who told local news outlet KFOR, she believes in karma and says she wouldn't have imagined keeping the money for herself. She reported the lost cash, and Goodwill was able to track down the owner thanks to some documentation included with the donation. I made the right decision. I did the right thing. Karma secured, Lessing was also rewarded with another generous surprise. The grateful individual who donated the money immediately instructed Goodwill to give her $1,000 for the good deed. Goodwill, too, commended Lessing for displaying the values they hope to instill in the communities they serve. And uh, there you go. A representative for Goodwill further told Fox News that Lessing unearthed the largest cash find reported for our central Oklahoma Goodwill locations in its 85-year history and one of the largest cash finds of any Goodwill store. Actually, it is kind of nice to hear that somebody would, you know, not just tuck that in their purse and head on home. <laughs> What would you have done, Nate? Right. Well, uh, oh, I mean, you know, with jail, $47,000, I'm going to go with uh, staying out of jail. 42. So, uh, first off, because, yeah, 42. But the other thing about it is, it's like, uh, I've been thinking about this. It was like, somebody once told me the best, if you're short on cash, Go to Goodwill and check the pockets of jackets. Have you ever and, done that? Uh, I never tried it, but, I mean, you know, people find 20s and stuff in the pockets of huh. nice jackets and, you know, or chains that they would have given to a valet or, or decide not to, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if would I, it would be hard, man. But since she got a grand out of it, I feel like, you know, that's a better deal. Yeah. Keep your job, stay out of jail, get $1,000. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go that way. Let's see. We got you know? we got comments like crazy here. Steffi Lindley says, Wu-Tang forever. Rosie Williams says, damn, Tom, I didn't know you like to get wet. I must have said something. I, I, I Traditionally, I don't like to be in the rain. Uh Tara Strom says, I just something DH2, the one in the airport. I didn't even know it existed. Uh, I thought the Sam Jackson one was the second movie. Uh, Midnight Shepherd says, uh, let's see, are people just flirting with each other? Um, Morty says it was Tara, right? Um, let's see, North and East. Just I can't, I can't, I can't keep track of all these conversations. Uh, there's a button near the shift to press and reset the world apparently and nate's got that of course nate's got a different outlook than most of us right now due to his afternoon activities um midnight shepherd says i'd rather go uh, okay uh people laughing i'm married to a 10-year veteran of the rochester police force rochester new york up there by where they used to have the uh, kodak and the uh, joke cola uh, factory uh, Goodwill is cheap. They could at least have matched it. <laughs> they could have matched the 42,000. 
a thousand k. I found eleven dollars in Adidas pants after I paid and it paid for all my purchases that day. Well, there you go. I got a goodwill to look for like seventies lamps, real cheesy seventies lamps. That's what I go there for. You got to rewire them a lot of times, but you know it's worth it. It's really worth it. What do you go there for, Nate? Anything? Um, well, when I was a smoker, ashtrays. Yeah. There tend to be a lot of ashtrays at, at uh, Goodwill. Yeah, from like businesses. I also go there and get coffee cups that have the names of weird business, you know, Allied Indemnified Electronics or whatever on it, you Ooh, know, or, so, or, or from a, yeah, co a, a conference, you know, National Association of Pipe Fitters, Local 402. I like to get stuff like that, but... Uh, all right, yeah. uh, Nate, are you are you uh, one of those people that's afraid an asteroid is going to hit you at any time? Well, I don't think it's going to personally like peg me in the head, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, well, I've got some good. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, man. We've been spinning in this ball and running the odds for how long? Yeah. You know, it's just like, it killed the dinosaurs. I mean, maybe <laughs> get one every hundred billion, you know? Yeah. And so, and it is time. I mean, we need to hit reset. And, yeah. Hold on. No. Hit, hit your button. Still no. nothing happened. Uh, well, Still nothing happened. Well, keep your fingers crossed. I've got good news for you. Oh, what's that? Um... NASA has given Earth the all-clear for the next century from a particularly menacing asteroid. Space Agency announced this week that new telescope observations have ruled out any chance of a giant Earth-ending asteroid smacking the Earth up till 2068. That's the same... Uh, this particular asteroid they're looking at is the same 1,100-foot 1, space rock that was supposed to come frighteningly close in 2029 and again in 2036. NASA ruled out any chance of a strike during those two close approaches, but a potential 2068 collision still loomed. First detected in 2004, Apophis, which is the name of the asteroid, is now officially off NASA's asteroid risk list. Scientists were able to refine Apophis's orbit around the sun thanks to radar observations earlier this month when the asteroid passed within 10.6 million miles. These scientists always do that to us. It's like, don't worry. It was close. How close? 10.6 million miles. Okay. Well, they know that the, ra the rats do better when they kill them if, if, if they don't know what's happening. <laughs> you know... <laughs> So I get the I get the whole idea. Yeah. My my plan is just give me a couple hours to get down a you know a fifth of whiskey. Yeah. And you know a pretty good size. Yeah, we know. We know. Movie, huh? Yeah, we know. Uh, Apophis will come within twenty thousand miles on April thirteenth, twenty twenty nine, enabling astronomers to get a good look. Like. What you just like? <laughs> Here's what I like, though. They're also there. It's like to me, this is one of those. This is one of those things where it's like, man, okay, we know the information, we're happy about it, but we're not going to tell anybody because we'll jinx it. You know, I mean, because all it takes is for another little asteroid floating through the world to hit one of those things, uh, put yeah. it back on course. You know, you mean? I mean, now like marbles, can, yeah, or like a game of marbles. What? Like a game of marbles or curling? Oh or yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like uh, you remember that? Of course, I know you do. Uh, uh, Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah. When when they had the pool shot that would go through the three planets. Yeah. You know, same difference, man. Yeah. I mean, when it happens, it happens. Yeah. I mean, we keep, you know, of course, we're tis the season again to yeah. to run, uh, you know, they're running, uh, uh, we've had, they keep, uh, excuse me, 
Use your words. North. Yeah, well, North Korea keeps launching uh, missiles into the sea to show their might. Yeah. And and it's all in protest of them taking a practice to make sure they don't get invade, invaded. Yeah. But, hey, you know. Well, a lot uh, of scientists at NASA do quote the third rock from the sun scenario in their meetings. So. Um, okay, here we had some comments. Uh, Steffi Lindley, uh, I already read that one. Antique lamps can make you big dollars on eBay, Sir Gully. I did not know that. Pegged in the head with a lawn dart. <laughs> lawn dart. <laughs> uh, Midnight Shepherd says, I heard there's an asteroid made of gold in space. I never heard that. Tara Strom says, I only drink Irish whiskey. Me too. Um, but I don't really drink very often. So, All right, you want to hear... Quentin Tarantino's top 12 movies of all time. Sure. Okay. We start off with one you might expect. Apocalypse Now by Francis Ford Coppola, 1979. I think we can all agree on that, right? Oh, yeah. I love the smell of uh, Apocalypse Now. Yeah. In, In the, the morning. morning. <laughs> it smells like victory. Here's uh, one you might not expect, but I love the movie. The Bad News Bears, Michael Ritchie, 1976. Yeah, but The Bad News Bears, that, that was back in the day when there was an honesty to films. Yeah. You know, like, the, like the Playboy scene, we'd never have a Playboy <laughs> scene in our, yeah. you know. And I don't know, I, it really, I, I felt like back then, or it's more relatable, you know, and yeah. yet not. At all. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, it's a great movie. You might not expect it. Carrie, Brian De Palma, 1976. Okay. He, I think he had to put a De Palma movie on there and didn't want to go. Uh, didn't want to go Scarface, but uh, Dazed and Confused by Richard Linklater, 1993. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Sergio Leone, 1966. Yeah, I got to say, uh, The Great Escape, John Sturges, 1963. That really is a good movie. I, I think it's great. He threw in a, uh, a uh, screwball comedy, His Girl Friday, Howard Hawks, 1939. It, it is, yeah, that, but that's a, fun. It is a really good movie. Um, man, this next one, I don't think you can deny it. Jaws, Steven Spielberg, 1975. It's so good. Um, Pretty Maids All in a Row, Roger Vadim, 1971. That's probably the, I would say of this list, it's one of the two people may not have seen. Uh, three, if you count this next one, which is one of my favorite, favorite movies. It's Rolling Thunder. John Flynn, 1977. It's uh, uh, William Devane comes home from serving as a Vietnam vet. And his family is attacked because somebody got the idea to put it, to give him a silver dollar for every year he was in captivity. And these guys come to steal it, kill his wife and his kid, grind his hand off in the garbage disposal. And uh, he goes to take revenge with Tommy Lee Jones. It's an incredible movie. Um, this is another one many people may not have seen, but it's outstanding. It's Sorcerer by William Friedkin. And it's about these guys trying to get this truck through the, some mountains. It's really awesome. And then the last one is Taxi Driver, Martin Scorsese, 1976. So, so no Godfather. Which which might have you know surprised some people, uh, but he's got all the directors. It's just that you know he he thinks they made better ones than the ones that I guess they're more classically recognized for. Yeah, you know when you ask me if you ask me what what uh, would be in a top twelve, yeah. the first thing that comes to mind is Excalibur. Really? Uh, 1970s X. I love that movie. Really? 
<laughs> oh yeah. I think it's it a, has a, the woman Helen Helen Hunt, right? Or Helen uh she's in a lot of she plays the an older lady now in a lot of movies like Red and stuff. Uh it, she Helen was, uh, Mirren. The, Hel- I mean, Helen Mirren. Yeah, she was Mirren's or whatever. <laughs> and uh yeah, I just love that film. Yeah. You know, it, it, it uh, especially because it has, uh, uh, now I'm a Star Trek guy too myself, it has Jean-Luc, it has uh, uh, Patrick, Patrick Stewart, Stewart. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's really kind of surprising that way. The knights in there are all very, play very distinguished people nowadays. And yeah. It's, it, it's, it's I, you know, and even just coming back and, yeah, you know, we've looked for it, sir. We can't find it, you know. <laughs> but yet, there's a big open door, and you yeah, know, I love it. Cool. Yeah, I, but Merlin's the most bad, uh, you know, MF that there can be, man. I mean, you know, because he's all like to to trap, uh, uh, Mara or whatever. Uh, he, you know, he, it's an encasing. I don't know. I guess the seventies had a lot of like, crystal, you know, because it yeah. looked like the, the the fortress of solitude, yeah. like just erected around her. Yes. And, but you know, I loved how he said it and how the smoke came out. Yeah. Like, you can totally tell he took a big drag and held it in. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's acting, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Tara Strom <clears throat> Strom says. See if I can scroll up here a little bit. We got comments. Um, Dolores says, hey, Nate, we can't even figure out how to flood a canal to dislodge a ship. Uh, Tara Strom says, <laughs> um, I'm having trouble with this. Jupiter protects us from 80% of uh, all space rocks in its gravity field. Uh, Steffi likes John nice. Lithgow on Third Rock. Jade Nicole says bourbon. Dolores Colbert, of course, says Tuaka. Tara Strom says Caligula. Uh, Morty says bourbon and scotch. <laughs> bourbon and scotch are where it's at. Uh, Rosie Williams says, and now everyone is going to cheers. And everybody's cheers, cheers, cheers. Tara Strom says, I'm getting trashed. Uh, you came to the right place. Uh, Midnight says, who said rum? People are late night. Thomas. Um, Tara says, 20 people in chat. Please like everyone. Morty says, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Tom Gully Show. Uh, hear more of them on uh, the, the TomGullyShow.com. And Morty Vickers says, Tom's merch page, where you can find that perfect shower curtain you've always wanted. And he's got a link there. And uh, Dolores says, I got it all. Open bar. So, um, yeah. People are partying like crazy. Dolores, I'm coming over. Yeah. Well, don't say you that. Know, let's just get smashed. Yeah, don't say that. She's up in... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. no! I I'm, I have no idea where she is. Well, she's not that I far. Mean, I so. didn't mean it yeah. like that. No, yeah. well, I don't know this. She'll she'll welcome Oops. you with open arms. Um, but uh, you know, I don't know. I I haven't seen Excalibur in ages and ages and ages. I I I I'd, I'd have to think real hard uh, for my top twelve, but I do like the interesting choices that he made, especially Rolling Thunder. Sorcerer is, um, you know, is it as good as The Exorcist? I don't know. It's uh, it's it's awful good though. Um, Morty Vickers says you're always the life of the party. D makes but it that easier. But could, could be a filmmaker trying to. It could. I'm sorry. Well, but but he you. may have really good uh, <coughs> reasons that he likes it. L. Mills is here. She says, hello, blokes. I've been trying to get a hold of L. Mills here the last couple days. I'll, I guess, try again this evening. Uh, Midnight Shepherd says, everybody so far from me. Uh, not, really, not really. Um. So, um. yeah, I can't think Every of, step you take. <laughs> yes, every breath you. But, but I, I, uh, I don't know what I'd have to think. Really, it's just so many good movies, um, and uh, like there's a movie I I love. It's called The Tin Star, and it's got Henry Fonda and uh, Anthony Perkins in it. And it's like it's man, it's so good. 
and uh, there's there's Open Range, which is another really great movie. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that one or not, but but there's a lot of oh here I can tell you this one would be in my top twelve, and it's called Down by Law. If you've never seen Down by Law, you gotta watch that movie. You have got to see Down by Law. I've got the Criterion uh, version of it, and I'm I'm just decided I'm watching that. Uh, I'm watching that that movie. Dolores says she's only four hours from you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's popular. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah. So there's there's a bunch of good ones uh, out there that are watchable. Um, I don't know. The first Rocky might make it in mine too. I mean, there's you know, there's, there's, oh yeah, there's a lot of good good movies out there. Uh, Midnight Shepherd says Galaxy so, Quest. Yeah, Galaxy Quest is. I love Galaxy one of my favorites. Quest. Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the Universe. Midnight Shepherd says, "So anybody else in Florida? Well, we'll find out." We used to have a dude here from Florida that was in all the time, but he's he's gone AWOL. I haven't seen him in ages. We got, we got somebody in Atlanta for you, Midnight. I don't know if that'll trip your trigger. I got Smokey and the Bandit here. Oh, the Warriors. You know, yeah, that's an incredibly good movie. Um, so okay, here here's another. Here, I got another question for you. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, you know that in Ron Williams gives that park scene monologue and all that, right? Talking about his wife going to go, or maybe that's inside. But it, regardless, are you talking about? <laughs> it's you that ta- scene uh, where he's talking about his. Are you talking about the uh, Goodwill Hunting? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. And then we go to uh, actually you play it every day with uh, uh, um, I, you know, it, it, it just goes. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Al Pacino mm-hmm. is uh, blind. What was the sin of a woman? Sin of a woman. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So you know that monologue, or the Rob Williams one. Which one do you think holds more weight in, in you know, in a race? Because I find those both almost equally emotional. I'm gonna say the uh, sin of a woman one. Yeah, it's more quotable. Well, and it's more dramatically pivotal to the movie because it's right at the end. Poor Charlie's about to get kicked out of school, sent back to Oregon. And um, he, he gives that speech that just cuts through all those snobby, bourgeois, prep school ideals and lays waste to the hypocrisy that's going on in the room, you know. And you don't think he's going to be able to do it. You've seen this guy horribly flawed uh, throughout the film and uh, incredibly abusive and all that other stuff. But he realizes the whole time through that Charlie is is one of the good ones, you know. He even says, you know, uh, every time in my life I knew which choice to make. I knew the right way to go, but you know what? It's too damn hard. Charlie here is at a cross. I mean, he, he just really, he nailed it. He got an Academy Award yeah. for it. Uh, L. Mills says, who's the chap in the flat, Tom? It is the great Nate. Uh, Jade Nicole says, Florida rules. Tara Strom says, death to Smoochie. Uh, there's one also, a great one called One Hour Photo with Rob, Robin Williams. Yeah. Uh, Stevie Lindley is agreeing with uh, Tara Strom. Dolores Colbert says, uh, you'll love Florida uh, to Midnight Shepherd. Morty Vickers says he misses Robin Williams. I think everybody does. Uh, it's, it's, it's just too bad. I mean, come on, Mrs. Doubtfire. I could watch that on a loop. Tara Strom says, so bad I well, have to use numbers. That and, um, 
uh, what was uh, it called? Uh, uh, Club Paradise. Yeah, Club Paradise was a uh, got some good Elvis Costello and Jimmy Cliff music in it. Um, Jade Nicole says hilarious. Um, yes, it's, it's bad. I have to spell out words that are blocked by YouTube. Well, we might have put those in there after all the death threats to me. So we might have blocked that. You can't blame YouTube for that. Google your desk. Oh, Dolores is always trying to make a connection. Um, so. Uh, well, Tom, it looks like I'm looking at the time. I didn't want to get past uh, my magic hour. Well, so, I mean, we still got yeah. a good. Well, we got a little while. But if you if you need to go, man. You can. Oh, oh no! I thought I don't know what I'm thinking. Don't worry about me. We, uh, uh, as you were saying, uh, yeah. the never-ending story. Maybe no. you're. <laughs> maybe maybe you're hitting the button, pushed you ahead in time, and uh, I don't know what. Uh, but we maybe got. It did. We got a, another good five to seven minutes here, Nate. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blazing saddles might be on mine. Uh, although I might switch it out with Young Frankenstein. You know what? I think I probably would switch it out for, with Young Frankenstein. Um, I'm trying to think of what else uh, might might make mine. Well, uh, I mean, you, you got... Uh, I mean, we can't forget Tarantino just because he had a list. Yeah, Pulp Fiction. So what is your... Yeah. Reservoir Dogs, the first time I saw it, it, that, it was like... That's what made me go to a film school. Yeah. You know, and waste a bunch of money. But regardless, you know, uh, interesting about Quentin Tarantino is he never went to film school. No, he worked he, at a video, video store. store. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, know? you could say Reservoir Dogs, I think the premise is amazing, and I think it plays out amazingly. Pulp Fiction to me. Uh, and I could say a couple of others, but Pulp Fiction to me has so much going on in it and the you know i i just i i i think i would lean that way a little more um yeah just a touch uh not much uh tara strom says young frank is one of the best gene wilder movies ever um it is uh yeah there's a song don't worry about me that's a good sinatra song steffi lindley says four rooms the scene with the kids you mentioned the scene with the mentholatum uh, rub. Haunted Honeymoon. I don't know that that would be on my list. Oh, I've seen that. That's with... Uh... No, I'm thinking of Transylvania. Well, it's got Daryl Hannah, I think, and Liam Neeson, and Peter O'Toole, and Beverly D'Angelo. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says Natural Born Killers, which is good. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, you didn't get credit for that. If I, if I, I think that if um, if the, I was gonna pick an Oliver Stone, it would probably be Platoon. Um, but it's just me. Um, but uh, I did like JFK. The reason I you can't know, like um, the reason I can't like J, JFK is there's so many factual errors in that. There's a website called 100 Errors in, of Fact in JFK. They based JFK off of a judge, Jim Garrison, I think was his name, that was kind of a loon. And it was his prosecution. He That's the character, actually, that, that uh, Costner plays in it. And there's a lot of terrible stuff. Dolores likes the road to Wellville. I've never been able to make it through that, uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, uh, True Detective season one. Um, but you know, there's 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 tons of good ones. Uh, I'd have to go through my my lit my my uh, movie collection. You know what? You know what's one that might make it on my top twelve that hasn't been out for very long was 1917. Have you seen that? Yes, with uh, Belushi. No, nineteen seventeen. That's nineteen forty-two. Nineteen seventeen is a World War One, and it's phenomenal. 
Um, but uh, another one that might make mine is Memento. Uh, but you have to see Down by Law. It's incredible. Uh, Tara Strom says the house that Jack built. Well, I want to go back to Memento for a second yeah. and mention that Chris Nolan literally gave us a new way of telling a story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was not that it hadn't been done in books or anything. I'm not saying that, but yeah. as a filmmaker, that that has his, you know, uh, you know, little little independent beauty. Yeah. Dude. The yeah. Act, he got the right actors. Yeah. He got, I mean, everything's so awesome. Well, and, and another that might make my list is L.A. Confidential. I uh, love that movie as well. That could not make my list, but another version of that does on another list. Yeah. Yeah, okay. L.A. Confidential. Cool. Lovely. All right. Well, see, now it's time. Oh, <laughs> No, I'm going to hit the red button. Anything happen? No. <laughs> Not here, no. All right, I'm, okay. Hey, guys, I had a great time. I hope you look forward to me next week. Uh, I love everyone. I love you all. Good night. All right, take it easy, Nate. We'll, uh, we'll wrap at you next week. That was the great Nate. Here for yet another week of... Uh, well, you were here. You know what happened. All right. So uh, let's see here. Uh, director's Cut. Uh, let's see. Where would I drop off? Scott Pilgrim. I mentioned Scott Pilgrim earlier. Uh, Baghdad Cafe, says Dolores Colbert. Jay Nicole says The Devil's Rejects 2. Not a fan of Rob Zombie, as Wild Bill says. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says Greyhound wasn't bad. It was not. Midway was not bad. Uh, Morty Vickers says, y'all haters for getting short circuit <laughs> and, and the great, you know, who's, who's Johnny song. Memento was brilliant, says Steffi Lindley. The actor was perfect. Reverend Wild Bill says, yeah, I don't care for Rob Zombie at all. Um, let's see. Everybody saying goodbye to Nate. The Halloween remakes are amazing. Uh, okay. Nate Dog, somebody says. Uh, love zombie movies, says Morty Vicker. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. Dolores Colbert says, great show, Tom. Uh, Tara Strom says, not the latest one. Jamie Lee Curtis sucked in the 2018 version. Uh, Steffi Lindley says, Sherry Moon equals hot. Mm, I guess. I guess for a groupie. Uh, Rosie Williams says, Dr. Satan. Dr. Satan. Uh, the first evil dead, maybe. Uh, Dolores says, I like Short Circuit. Oh, I can't watch it. Who's Johnny? Who's Johnny? Uh, what movie was I watching recently? I think it's To Live and Die in L.A. It was just the music was so 80s. Trading Places might make mine. In fact, I think it would. The, the Blues Brothers movie might make mine. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to sit down and I'd have to, you know, we'd have to add some things up. We'd have to charts, diagram. Morty Vickers says, Rose knows what's up. Jade Nicole says, Sherry is a terrible actor. Yeah, I just, I'm, I mean, I, 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 if, if you like him, like him, I just don't. I, I, can't, I just don't. I mean, and, and, and all of his, he's just way too derivative and I, there's nothing going on there. Evil Dead Remake was a masterpiece, says Tara Strom. So anyway, well, Dolores says, Jamie Lee, my girl. Uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. over in the U.K. and Ireland. We'll be having a special weekend edition U.K. lockdown show. So show up for that. I'll talk about Wonder Woman in the last 15 minutes see her get condescended to even though she saves the world you know that thing and uh that's gonna just about do it for this one we'd like to thank everybody who showed up steffi lindley dolores colbert tara strom morty vicker the sultan of the outdoor group uh jade nicole was here 
Uh, I believe I said Dolores Colbert, International Woman of Mystery. Diana O'Brien, I know, is here. Thomas Hamilton from Glasgow, Scotland, I know, is here. How can we forget the Reverend Wild Bill, official spiritual advisor to the Tom Gully Show? Rosie Williams, better get them beans on, Rosie. Uh, who else? Oh, Elle Mills was here. Can't forget her. Please. Can't forget her. Uh, if there's anybody I'm forgetting, I'm so sorry. I feel shame. I do. I feel shame. Um, Midnight Shepherd. There we go. And with all that being said, I believe the only thing left to say is, till next time, we'll see you next time.